Hey, it's Dave Armstrong with Monument Wealth Management. Just wanted to cut a quick video uh, to talk about some things that have been going on. It's no secret that interest rates have jumped a lot over the first few weeks of 2022. And while there's a lot of commentary out on it, there was a recent report published by Goldman Sachs Global Investment Research Group, which reviewed five questions they believe are most commonly asked by investors about interest rate moves and their implications for the overall equity market. So I'm gonna review two of those questions along with some of their charts, and of course sprinkle in some of my opinions, which I feel are the most important to the general investor because, and no offense, but the general investor really is a lot different than more of the institutional clients at Goldman. But don't fear, I'm here to make it relevant to you since I don't think George Soros or Carl Icahn is tuning into this video, but hey man, if you guys are, I mean, please reach out. I'd love to have dinner with you, but all right. So the first question they addressed that's relevant and interesting to an investor is, how do equity valuations look in light of the sharp recent rise in interest rates? Goldman, and I'm paraphrasing here to cut out, you know, to cut down to the chase, they basically said, you know, regardless of the level of interest rates, equities typically react poorly to sharp changes in the interest rate environment. And the past week has really been no exception. You know, historically, equity prices have declined when interest rates rise by two standard deviations of, or more, according to the Golden Report. And this is true for both nominal and real interest rates. And that's starting to sound a little wonky, but, you know, it's, it's true for both of the nominal and real interest rates across both weekly and monthly periods. And the two standard deviation threshold was exceeded on both of those horizons last week. So here's a chart for a visual. Now pause on this chart if you need to dig in, but it shows all the way over on the right-hand side that it's pretty typical for the one month return on the S&P 500 to dip below or dip down about three tenths to four tenths of one percentage point with large interest rate changes like we've recently seen in the 10-year treasury yield. Okay. So another question they address is, what is the outlook for growth stocks versus value stocks from here? And this is a good one. They highlight that the recent rise in interest rates has accompanied a sharp equity rotation from growth and into value. And many of, the cl many of their clients have recently voiced expectations for an extended period of outperformance going forward, of value, outperformance of value. You know, like, I'm not surprised that their clients have voiced those expectations. And as I've read several articles that echo those same expectations. And in fact, we've actually fielded a few questions about that from clients and some other folks that I regularly chat with in the industry. So this is a pretty popular topic right now. I think that the tech bubble of 2000 is going to become a very common point for comparing today's environment. In fact, it's already become a pretty common point for comparing today's environment. So the report goes on to highlight a lot of interesting things about this outlook of growth versus value, but they also go on to say that while there's a lot of factors that support this current and popular outlook for value outperforming growth going forward, there's also a couple of key differences between what we're seeing in today's market environment and what we were experiencing back in the 2000s. One of the similarities that Goldman notes between today and 2000 is that they feel, um, they also feel that one of the strongest arguments in favor of value is this extraordinary degree of dispersion that we're seeing inside the actual equity, the US equity market. They note that the valuation spread between the highest and the lowest valuation stocks in the market has always been a pretty good indicator of the return potential for value, but it's also a really poor timing signal. So check out these two charts real quick. And what you'll see here is that while the spread has definitely narrowed recently, it's still pretty wide relative to history. So pause on these next two charts if you need to dig in. But they're essentially showing that the narrowing of the dispersion and the valuation premium of growth over value, that's what they're showing, they're showing those two things. So the first chart is essentially showing that the dispersion and valuation is narrowed, but still really, really wide. Okay, and then the second chart is showing you that the premium for growth versus value has actually declined, but it's also still well above the average. The report goes on to highlight that Goldman Sachs research forecast for the continued rise in interest rates supports the outlook that value stocks are gonna outperform growth stocks while interest rates are going up. And this makes sense to me, um, and I agree that this is likely going to be the case since rising interest rates essentially are indicative of an improving economy and 
improving economic growth. So it's natural that interest rates will go up and that in turn will likely increase the expected return of value stocks over growth stocks. And now this is not a function of growth stocks losing money while value stocks make money. It's not like that. In fact, the report goes on to say that the economic growth of today is a little bit different than in 2000 because the expectation for long-term economic growth is actually much lower today than it was all the way back in 2000. And you'll remember that's the whole irrational exuberance thing from way back in the 2000s for those of you that remember that far back. But a lower expected growth rate going forward for the next 10 years from today will definitely be a headwind for value firms to grow their earnings, okay? So in fact, that's probably the major reason why the growth stocks have been doing so much better over the past 10 years than they have any time that I can remember in my career and probably even longer. So this likelihood of slowing economic growth going forward is actually an argument in favor of growth stocks. So look, there's no rocket science going on here. It's, it just makes sense to me and I agree with them. I also agree that this is a horrible indicator for timing. So I'm again gonna beat the drum on following a process, following a plan, and keeping all the pistons in your engine firing to keep the car moving forward at the speed that makes sense for your plan and your risk tolerance. Okay, so do not, under any circumstance, wholesale eliminate your exposure to growth stocks and take all that money and load up on value stocks. That would not be smart, period, okay? Now, it, this is my opinion, and I could be wrong, and I get it, but hey, you know me, and you're always going to get my unfiltered opinion on anything. The good news is that it really doesn't matter if I'm right or wrong if you have a solid portfolio, okay? So to wrap it all up, look, this stuff is interesting. I love it. I, I read it. It's fun to think about. Lots of people love it. I love reading smart people. Those guys at Goldman are really, really smart. When they write, when they write something and I get my hands on it, I read it. But this stuff is nothing more than just interesting information to know about and for you to use to evaluate what you're doing in your own portfolio, okay? So just use it as a litmus test. You either do or do not have a good portfolio and don't mess with it any more than that, okay? So that's it. Reach out with any questions and as always, keep looking forward.